All right, so this video is responsible for showing you how to disassemble the lower unit and the gear housing of an Evinrude or Johnson outboard motor. This specifically is a 1976, 85 horsepower, but this will apply to pretty much any Johnson or Evinrude lower unit that's of a higher horsepower. Um, first, obviously, you have to take the lower unit off the boat and take the prop off. I have a video posted for that. Please go ahead and look up that video. I'll go ahead and post a screenshot of what that video is called and how to look it up. Okay, so the first step of doing this is you actually have to disassemble basically this prop shaft first. So the way you're gonna do that is there are four bolts that are inside of here. Um, so you'll see them all around. There's one, there's two, there's a third one, and there's the fourth one. They are a 7 16 So what you'll need is a long extension with a ratchet and a 7 16 and it's hard to do this while I'm talking to you guys, but once you're on there, they'll be able to loosen them up and you're gonna take them all the way out. What that does is the, the gear plate holder that holds it in there, that'll take those off. So once you get all those bolts out, I'll show you the next step. All right, so we've got those four screws or four bolts completely loosened, okay? All the way around, they have to be all the way loosened. Now the next part is to pull out this bearing housing, which is this big metal piece right here. The way you do it is with a bearing puller. So this here is a 5 16 coarse thread. This here is a 5 16 coarse thread. The way you do that is you put a bearing puller right here where this divot is, and you run a 5 16 bolt through here and here with the bearing puller, and it'll pull this entire thing out. Now, I take a lot of time to get that soaked with uh, some brake loose or some PB blaster so that any of the adhesions around the rim here make it loosened up. And then what you can do is you go to AutoZone and rent an harmonic balance puller. It's free to rent. All you gotta do is pay for it. When you return it, you get all your money back. This piece right here combined with this right here. Let me show you how to set this up, okay? It'll look like when you're done. So when you're done, it'll look like this all set up, okay? and I'll show you how it should look on the device itself, okay? All right, so this will show you how I have this harmonic balance puller set up. So these are eight inch, five sixteenths coarse threaded bolts that I got from, from Home Depot. This is the harmonic puller that I got from AutoZone. And then I wasn't able to actually put this piece on there. It just wasn't long enough. If you can find 10 inch bolts, it might be, but it's okay without it as long as you can keep this nub on here it'll work just fine i don't think i'll be able to hit it with an impact but i know that i can use this as a plain old ratchet so let me just show you how this will work okay see that rotating on there and that's pulling out that bearing housing and you can see it loosening as i go and then once it's fully loose i should just be able to pull the whole thing out let me show you here that i don't have an extra hand unfortunately there you go and there comes the bearing housing. All right, so that's how you remove the bearing housing. All right, this is the bearing housing. So this is the external side. This is the internal side with your bearings on the inside. That ring that fell out at the end is just a spacer ring that sits on top of that. These are your four bolts that I took out. Now these bolts are a little special. They do have O-rings around them. So you'll need to replace the O-ring that um, goes around them whenever you replace your seals. You can see that O-ring. So if you get a new lower unit seal kit, it'll have those O-rings. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look in there and see what we're looking at now. So with that removed, this is what you should be seeing now. Okay. The next step is these large snap rings. So there we go. So you see that snap ring there? That snap ring needs to come out for you to be able to take out the internal components. All right, let me show you that step next. All right, to get that internal C-clip out, this is what I recommend. OMC or Johnson makes the tool. It's like $120, but this is an internal C-clip or cert clip um, gear wrench is the brand. So it's an internal C-clip wrench that's a double hinge by gear wrench it costs like 30 bucks on amazon it's usually next day shipping i've had this one for years and it works fantastic for this 
All right, so I've got both of the circ clips out. Now that that's out, these internal parts can start to fall out. So the first thing I would do is tilt it forward, give it some shaking, and you'll see that this starts to work forward here, okay? There we go. And this, this is your reverse gear. I misspoke in the video, so I'm just doing a voiceover. But this is specifically your reverse gear, and this was my problem. Um, you can see there the nubs on each side where the dog gear engages are kind of worn down. Mine was not going in and out of gear correctly, so that's why those edges are worn down like that. And we'll discuss that later in the video. And there is, you'll see the dog clutch is still in there, and the other gear is still in there. Um, the way we get this out is what I'll show you next. All right, so organization is huge to me. So this is what's able to come out now that you have those cert clips out. And let me just show you, it would come out in this order. So you're gonna take your backing plate off. You have your bearing right here, your gear itself. And then don't be, don't lose this because there is a loose spacer right here on the inside. So again, that order that that all comes out in is like this. So make sure that when you set it down somewhere, you have it all in the right order that way you're not going to lose those pieces okay all right that'll help you guys moving forward with this rebuild so i just set it down just like that okay now let's go ahead and do the next part all right to do the next part to get this entire shaft out you have to take your water pump assembly off and your gearbox assembly off i was also always told that this needs to be in reverse when you do that so to get this into reverse this shifter level has to be pulled upward so you might have to rotate the drive shaft clockwise to get it into position and then you're just going to pull this gear shift lever up to get it to go into reverse okay and when you do that you should actually see this protrude back just a little bit now that we've loosened everything up all right so this should be in reverse and now we're going to take off this entire gear housing or sorry this entire water pump housing and our gearbox housing all right so i just use a deep well 716 and that puts me right on all of these and get these nice and loose Right, and then do that with all four of the bolts that go around this. All right, all four bolts are out of the housing, so it's broke free. Now the whole thing can just literally slide off in one big piece. And that's your entire water pump as one big piece. And then we'll talk about how to replace that at the end. Now this plate will also come off. Okay. And then in this model, there's no gasket that sits in between the plate and the metal housing you're seeing there. So that's just normal, there's no gasket there. And that's a lot of salt water damage that you're seeing there from running this in salt water, even though I flush it every single time. All right. Now onto the gear housing still, 7 16 bolts. So all four of these have to come out. All right, let's do that. Okay, all those bolts are out. Now, anytime something's stuck with gaskets, I'll use a rubber mallet end, so that way I don't break the metal and then just give it a couple taps. And there she fell off. So this shifter model is actually kind of a unique model. The way it works is these two pieces just fit together like that when they line up. And it's, uh, it's a little different. It's kind of unique in that concept. It doesn't actually, there, see, it doesn't actually require any bolt training. That's the connection right there. And it uses that to pull up on the shifter and pulling up is reverse. So remember again, make sure that's in reverse. All right. Now that's done and removed, next step. Okay, next we take off the bearing housing for the drive shaft. So 7 16 all four of those, let's do that. All right, once all the bolts are out of the water housing, I just use a big pair of channel locks to get that out. Otherwise it can be pretty difficult to get out. Sometimes using a little screwdriver and tapping on it, but this is the method that I've always used, big pair of channel locks. All right, now if you have removed your water pump assembly and your gear housing assembly and you put it in reverse before you did that, meaning pull it all the way up, this whole drive shaft will now pull out, okay? And let's go ahead and just set that down. That's your dog gear and see how it's all the way back? That means it's in reverse. If the dog gear was in the middle like this, that's not. All right, the next step is gonna be taking out the drive shaft so if you look in there you'll see the pinion gear to the right that nut that's underneath the pinion gear is what locks that drive shaft in place the way i recommend doing this is grabbing a 7 8 inch closed end now you take the drive shaft out you're going to put that 
wrench right on that pinion gear locking nut. Just make sure you get rotated around there. And then once that's on there, you'll know because you'll be turning the drive shaft with it. And then put a pair of vice grips at the end of the drive shaft so that the teeth lock into each other. That way you're not screwing up the teeth on the drive shaft. Okay, now once that's tight, it's really just a matter of breaking that loose. Okay, see? I was able to do that pretty easily. Some of yours might be a little tighter. Now I'm going to keep that box end going there and just turn this until that nut falls off. I can feel it rotating. Alright. And there, there's my nut. Which means that this should all pull out now. And there's your drive shaft. And then give it a little pinion gear all right you have the drive shaft assembly out of the way the pinion gears out of the way which means now that your forward gear can come right out so just go ahead and grab that it's a little longer than some of the other ones so let's go ahead and take a look so this is the difference between your forward gear it has these teeth and then if you look on the inside too it's differently shaped than your reverse gear now mine looks like it's in pretty good shape i don't see too many damaged teeth and the edges aren't worn down very much so that's actually looks pretty good all right all right, so you took your forward gear out after you took your pinion gear out and stuff. Now you got to take out this uh, big device in here. But to do that, you got to take out your reverse shifter and, oh, sorry, your gear shifter. So this whole piece will come out as your gear shifter from there. And now this big piece in here is able just to slide out as well. Let me grab it with a pair of pliers. It'll be easier that way. One second. All right, so I just use a pair of pliers, and there's an inner lip there that I'll show you. If you grab that inner lip, it's pretty easy just to pull this whole thing out. There you go. So that's how I do it. Grab that inner lip like that, and just put the whole thing up on here. All right, now your lower unit is completely disassembled. 